Welcome to Coding Shorts. I'm Sean Wildermuth. I was looking at an article by Tim Hewer today where he introduces a VS Code feature called DevKit for C Sharp or C Sharp DevKit. And this is a set of features that are being brought to Visual Studio Code cross platform that will enable you to have more of a Visual Studio type experience directly in Visual Studio Code and with the promise of giving us better IntelliSense, better predictive text, all of that, so we can get a richer experience in Visual Studio Code. Let's get started. So now that we're in VS Code, you want to notice that this is an, just an open new window. There's no projects being set, though there's a hint about what's coming because there's a new button that says create.net project, but we'll get to that in a moment. Let's talk about the extensions first. So if I put in C-sharp here, you'll notice the C-sharp extension that many of you might already have installed, or you'll need to find this and install it. And one of the things you'll notice is that I'm using a pre-release version here, and I could switch back to the OmniSharp powered original version, but this is using Rosalind to do all the work for us. So make sure that's installed. And we'll also want to look at dev kit because the C sharp dev kit should be installed as well. And optionally, you can install the IntelliCode for C sharp dev kit. That helps give us some AI driven IntelliSense and IntelliCode that we're probably already using inside of Visual Studio itself. So with all those installed, I could come here and say create.net project, or if you don't want to use it there or can't, you'll notice that there is now new options inside the .NET command. So when I hit Control Shift P to bring up the command palette, if I type .NET after it, you'll see these different things. Some of these have always been here, build, clean, rebuild, etc. Generate assets for build and debug, but we're gonna choose new project. A new project is all gonna happen inside the command palette. Here it's going to show me all of the project templates that I have installed not just the ones that are built in, but if any are installed here. And I'm gonna create the one with razor pages and you'll see why in a minute. And so if I select a folder to create this in, fun with dev kit, you'll see it reopens our project. It'll relaunch Visual Studio Code in this project. And importantly, it's opening up a solution file. And that's one of the reasons why the new experience here also adds a solution file. If we had done .NET new Web API, et cetera, it wouldn't have created a solution file for us. So to give it a more of the Visual Studio experience, that's an extra step they're going in order to allow you to think of things in sort of a solution base. And this has all the things you're probably used to when you're looking at a directory structure, which we are here, and we always do in this Explorer. But if we close that, there's a new Solution Explorer. Now this should look a lot more like what you might be used to in Visual Studio. There's a few things that don't work here, but a lot more of what you might expect. Like you'd be able to see what dependencies the project has, though currently there's no support for actually adding NuGet packages directly from here like we have in Visual Studio. But we can see that we're getting the nesting that we're used to, different versions, WW root in the same way. You're getting it as we look at uh, the solution itself. In fact, when we hover on the solution and we press plus, it's gonna prompt us to create a new project in the solution. And in the same way, running new file here, because it's in the solution of you, will actually show you the different templates it has for creating items. And these again are all driven by the .NET new command. So any that are installed there, you'll be able to see that. So you can see the view imports, the view start, protocol buffers, razor pages and components. If we go ahead and say class, and I'll call this my foo class. It's going to go ahead and create it in the project the way we want to. And if you'll notice, this is much more similar to what we saw in Visual Studio. Now, OmniSharp is able to do a lot of the work that this new extension does, but this new extension is a lot faster because it's powered by Rosalind instead of something else. So to me, that's a really important idea here. The same way, we can go to the folders and I'm gonna say File New, and this time I'll pick a Razor page. Now I'm creating the razor page, you'll notice it didn't prompt me for a name. I suspect that's gonna change soon because it didn't grab our 
namespace either, like it did with the class. So I really think that's part of what we're going to see uh, as an improved experience. But it did create both files. It just happened to call it pages. And so first thing I'm going to do is go into pages here. I'm going to put in our namespace, which happens to be fun with dev kit pages. So IntelliSense is working there. That makes me pretty happy. And let's go ahead and just rename this in the way we always have. So contact page model or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to change it there. And notice it changed it here, but did it change it in the CS HTML? Nope. We're going to need to change it here as well. And again, I think this experience is going to get better as time goes on. This really is just a pre-release version. Fun with dev kit, pages, contact page model. And then we'll be able to do everything you want to do. And in fact, if I rename this to contact as well, that just renames both files. Currently, it isn't changing the name, but if I have this right, if we do this with other files, it doesn't have that same experience in Visual Studio where it will change the class underneath us. We could still always use renaming, which certainly still works, but it is something you want to think about. It's not quite the experience of Visual Studio, but it also doesn't give you that light environment that we actually want. And so let's open up a console real quick because there isn't a way to add dependencies on our own. I'm just going to use the .NET add package. I'll just pick bogus since it's a short package name. Because currently there's no NuGet packages quite yet. But when I add it here, you'll see in dependencies we now have packages here. And there's our bogus. Again, similar experience to what we're used to but not a way to add the packages interactively. You can certainly do them in a terminal. Another of the places I really liked the improvements were in the way they're handling Razor pages. So if we create a new variable, and I'll just call it Sean, I should be able to just use it here. And this is one of the places where I found that the Razor page syntax, the Razor syntax, whether you're an MVC or you're in Razor Pages, wasn't quite as good as it is now. So date time dot UTC now to short date string. We're getting all of that without a lot of work. Now we're getting these warnings. When this happens with the preview right now, what I've been doing is restarting. It takes a minute for the startup project to work, and we can see that that was pretty quick. Let's see if our pages are still a problem. I go back to index, and everything's all good again. Not sure why that happened. I suspect it's that OmniSharp and C Sharp are competing a little, but you don't have both installed, but I do have some other profiles that have different ones installed. And with this new change, we should be able to debug directly into our Razor pages as well. So I'm going to run the C Sharp debugger. You're getting some warnings about preview because I have a preview SDK installed, but it's not the one you need. And you'll notice we actually stopped inside of the Razor page now. Much better experience than we had before. Now, will this debug experience be quite as powerful as we're used to in Visual Studio? Probably not. But for me, this handles the 90% case. It, I found, in fact, I did a video earlier, which I'll put a little link to up here, that Visual Studio code wasn't ready for c -sharp development for large extended projects. For little demos and stuff, it's fine, but for anything bigger. And I think this is the turning point where I'll be able to use Visual Studio Code for C-sharp as well with not, without feeling like I'm having to handhold the IDE, without having to worry about oddities and what OmniSharp was finding, or more importantly, the speed. The speed of running this, the speed of parsing all those files, those are much faster now. I'll let this run. Of course, we can stop it. And so to me, this is a good experience. This is what I would want from a project. So if I wanted to add a X unit test project, and we'll call it devkit.tests, and we'll put it in the same directory. And you should notice that it's adding it to the solution file as well. So if we go up here and look at the actual solution file, you'll see that both projects, DevKit, as well as the tests are there. We can start to do those normal things we've been doing. 
Go check it out, and I'll put the link again below my face to see whether you think this is a better experience. Remember, this is like the first preview, so there are going to be some rough corners. And go ahead and um, issue bugs. There's a repository in GitHub that has them, and there's also a secondary tool. You'll find all of that at the article from Tim Heuer. So I want to thank Tim Heuer for helping me get unstuck with some of this earlier today, and hopefully I can bring you this and give you a taste of what's coming. And we've come to the part of the video where I ask you to help me out. I'd love you to go ahead and like and subscribe, share this on your social media. Being able to help developers is what I do, and I feel like these coding short videos are a great way. They're nice and concise. I like, unlike my extended courses that are three, eight hours, you know, these big things, that the coding shorts, I can show you one very concrete thing in a very short amount of time, and it sort of keeps me busy and keeps me off the streets, as my wife would say. So thanks for watching. This is Coding Shorts. My name is Sean Wildermuth. See you next time. Thank you.